Pokemon Masters, Berkey Toby here, and is it just me or are legendary Pokemon beginning to seem a little less legendary? With the box art legends of Scarlet and Violet being on your team or in your inventory from the very beginning, being rideable by starting Pokemon trainers everywhere, and on top of that, having multiples of them appearing on screen at the same time. This really takes away the magic, doesn't it? Aren't legendary Pokemon supposed to be these powerful, rare, one-of-a-kind creatures? Well, not quite. It's a bit of a misconception. We've seen in the animated series a baby Lugia. We know that three Type Null were created at the same time. We've seen Solgaleo and Lunala come together from across the dimensions to create new Cosmog. We know that there's Galarian versions of the legendary birds, and in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, we see both Giovanni with a Mewtwo, and then through the Ultra Warp ride, you can obtain yet another Mewtwo, and that Pokemon was only ever thought to be one created. But we know for a fact there are multiples of legendary Pokemon. So, multiples of legendary Pokemon isn't the end of the world, but look at them four, Coridon and Maridon, just in line with each other. Doesn't this just take away the magic and the majesty and the power of them? And yet here's the weirdest thing. The Pokemon Scarlet and Violet website would have you think that these Pokemon have a power that far surpasses that of other Pokemon. Far surpasses that of other Pokemon, like Mewtwo, said to be the most powerful Pokemon. Dialga, creator of time. Palkia, creator of, of space. Seriously, more powerful than them? As far as I can tell, the only power that Maridon and Coridon have that other legendary Pokemon don't is the power to get it on and reproduce. Mm, no, uh, but as I mentioned, Baby Lugia in the anime, Solgaleo and Lunala reproducing into Cosmog. We know legendary Pokemon do have an egg group. They are part of the undiscovered egg group. That doesn't mean that they don't lay eggs. It means that their egg group is undiscovered. So how exactly do Coridon and Maridon have the power to surpass other Pokemon, potentially these other legendary Pokemon? Well, I think I have the answer and I think it's gonna shock you. But there is one unassuming Pokemon that has the power to surpass other Pokemon that I do wanna talk about first, and that is Psyduck, my favorite, and my favorite hoodie. This is a segue to today's sponsor, Zavi. Zavi is the home of pop culture where movies, TVs, games, music, comic books collide. They have been a regular sponsor on this channel and have been responsible for some of my favorite hoodies that I've got to wear throughout the years. In fact, this Psyduck hoodie, I own three of them because I just like them that much. I think they're incredibly soft and I just, I love the designs. And they've got officially licensed merch from all of your favorite pop culture areas, whether that's Marvel, Star Wars, Pokemon, Jurassic Park. I bought one of these Jurassic Park shirts recently, very nice. And Zavi have just launched their all new legendary Pokemon collection, showing off the legends of the Kanto region with great new shoes and shirts. My favorite is the Mewtwo Acid Tie-Dye Wash, but I also gonna love these shirts for Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno. It's all about legendary Pokemon and legendary clothing. What are you waiting for? It's time to go get some legendary clothes, which you can get using the link at the top of the description. And it's not just the clothes, they sell Pop Funkos, Pokemon cards, and of course, you might be familiar with the One Company Pokeball, which I absolutely love. It's so weighty, and it just sits perfectly in my background. So what are you waiting for? Use my link at the top of the description to get hold of what are some of my favorite clothes in my wardrobe uh, and enjoy. And of course, thank you to Zavi for sponsoring this video. Right, so Maridon and Coridon, given that they are absolutely everywhere, how is it that the Pokemon company can justify saying that they have a power that far surpasses that of other Pokemon? Especially when we've seen the power of other Pokemon. We've just come off the back of Legends Arceus where we've seen literally godly Pokemon. How could they claim that this Pokemon is more powerful? Well, there's two parts to this, with the first part being that Maridon and Coridon are the same Pokemon. Coridon represents the past, while Maridon represents the future, and in fact that's what Scarlet and Violet are all about the past and the future. Lots of people have been criticizing recently the fact that Coridon runs around on four legs even though it's got what looks to be the beginnings of a giant wheel in its chest. Maridon of course uses its wheel as it should but isn't that just a sign of the evolutionary connection between the two of them? First of all they've got very similar names and shapes, they have very similar abilities in the way that they travel around the overworld and they seem to fill the exact same role in Scarlet and Violet. That of course being because they're box exclusive legendaries. But here's the kicker, the fact that Coridon runs around like that despite the wheel shape appearing in its chest is a sign of evolution in progress. My belief is eventually Coridon will realize that the wheel is a far more effective way to travel. As a result of that, it won't need its back legs as much to push it around and so they'll atrophy and turn into the jets of a Maridon. We are talking over millions of years, of course, but that is how one creature will become the other. Now let's talk about the other elements of time in this. Lots of people have been suggesting that these Pokemon or these games might have something to do with 
time travel. There was a whole thing on uh, Kayla's Capsules channel, which I absolutely recommend you check out, where she was talking about quantum time crystals, which seem to be to do with the new terastalizing feature. It seems that condensing the energy of time to help transform a Pokemon might be something that is tied deep into the lore of Coridon and Maridon. So suggesting that they might be the same Pokemon at different points in time, representing the past and the future, isn't totally far-fetched. But time is just one power that we've seen many other Pokemon wield. Like I say, Dialga, but also we know that Calyrex can see through time and interestingly wears a crown. Terrestrial Pokemon crown. Yeah. Uh, and then also we know that Celebi can travel through time. These Pokemon are said to have a power that far surpasses that of other Pokemon. So I submit to you that they're not just traveling through time. It's not like that at all. I'm going to submit to you, and I'm going to use artwork by The Last Shame in here because I just think this is a fantastic way of kind of representing it. All Coridon and Maridon are the same Pokemon everywhere in time all at once. Eh? Sorry, what? Yeah, you know when you see multiple of them next to each other? I am submitting to you that all four of those are exactly the same Pokemon at different points in that Pokemon's timeline. Coridon and Rhydon might be the only legendary Pokemon of which there is only one. And it exists across the entire Pokemon timeline, potentially multiple times across that timeline in both its youngest and oldest self. This is like when two versions of the Doctor meet and they're in the same place at the same time. It's the same character's history they're just in the same space at once. This is referred to, of course, as a paradox. But paradoxes are super common in the Pokemon world. And in fact, for this one, I want to look to the fourth Pokemon movie because I think this illustrates it so, so well. In the fourth Pokemon movie, a young Professor Oak meets Ash Ketchum and shows Ash Ketchum, hey, I'm drawing a bunch of Pokemon, including Celebi, the time travel Pokemon. Ash says, that's really cool. And that kind of reminds me of a Pokedex. And young Professor Oak says, What's a Pokedex? And Ash explains and shows him the Pokedex. Of course, we know that Professor Oak is the person who created the Pokedex. And this is likely because when he was younger, he saw Ash Ketchum show him the Pokedex. But how could Ash show him the Pokedex if he hadn't made it? Well, he made it because he saw it and he saw it because he made it. This is a paradox and it's known as the bootstrap paradox in which somehow there's a god in the machine. Somehow something has gotten into the timeline, but it doesn't really have a proper origin. This is then reaffirmed at the end of the movie when a very sick looking Celebi is about to die. And then a portal opens up in the sky and all of Celebi's friends show up to save it. This is kind of a strange one because for the whole movie, we only thought there was one Celebi. We didn't know that there were gonna be literally hundreds of them. And how did they know where to find their friend? Unless this isn't hundreds of Celebi. This is the same Celebi, the time travel Pokemon constantly returning to this same point in time. We know that paradoxes can exist in the world of Pokemon because it's illustrated earlier on in that movie and yet the, you know, whole universe isn't destroyed as a result of a hundred of the same Celebi coming to save itself. And if you think, hang on though, I've watched the sci-fi movies. If you interact with your past self, you're going to rip a hole in reality. Well, welcome to the Pokemon universe where we have ultra wormholes and space time distortions most recently and Hooper running around just causing portals into the real world in Pokemon Go. Ripping apart the fabric of reality, Pokemon's been juggling with that since generation six. And I know what you're thinking. Hang on, to Toby, 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 Toby. You are overthinking this hugely. When four of the legendary Pokemon appear on the same screen, that's because four Po people are coming across from different Pokemon universes. You know how the Pokemon multiverse works. Each version of each game is its own universe and they're all coming together from different universes. There's only one Pokemon per uh, timeline. You're overcomplicating it, Toby. It's like saying if in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, in each one there's a Mewtwo, and then you trade them all to one copy, you're now trying to justify there being three Mewtwo in one game. It's just because they've all come from different universes. And to that, I'd say, yeah, that's true. But the point is, the evidence is already there that Coridon and Maridon are probably the same Pokemon at different points in time. But these Pokemon are said to have powers that far surpass that of other legendary Pokemon. And given that they are in the hands of beginner trainers right from the get-go, given that other Pokemon have the power to wield time and space, the only way that I could see this legendary Pokemon surpassing, far surpassing the powers of other Pokemon, including legendary Pokemon, is if in fact it is the case that unlike other legendary Pokemon where even across the multiverse, there are multiple Mewtwo and even Arceus, within the realms of Scarlet and Violet across every copy of the game that we're going to get to play. There is but one single Pokemon that we all share in our journeys through the game, able to exist in every point in time, in every timeline, sometimes 
multiple times over. But that's just my thinking. Let me know what you think about this theory down in the comments below. And of course, thank you to Zabby for sponsoring this video. It is the home of pop culture, of gaming, and music, and movies, and comic books, and TV. So don't forget to, of course, click that link at the top of the description and get hold of some nice, get hold of some nice merch. Thank you all for watching. And of course, so hi, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. As always, a massive thank you to those of you who support this channel on Patreon. You make this channel possible. And a special thank you to the big patrons of this month, the Elgator, Jed Rubin, and Michael Hornshoe. Thank you.